everybody. I'm Karen Allgaier and I'm a certified Iyengar Yoga teacher. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about this beautiful ancient prayer for the welfare of all beings. This is an old uh, Sanskrit prayer that comes from a uh, Sanskrit text, one of the Upanishads. The Upanishads are from around five or 600 before common era, so at least 2000 years old. And they contain, you know, just um, ancient spiritual wisdom. And I feel this prayer for all beings is just extremely important at this time, that whatever we ourselves are facing, that we recognize that others are also facing a lot of difficulty. And uh, if we dedicate some of our energy uh, toward their well-being, it's actually quite good for us. We feel better. And because we're all connected, it's actually true that it, that it helps others. It helps others to direct our energy and our intention toward their well-being. So what I plan to do here is go through a little bit of the pronunciation of the chant and the meaning of the chant. And I will just say I'm, I'm a beginner in the study of Sanskrit. Um, anything I know about it is due to my teacher, Leslie Freiberg. And... Uh, I will put a link to her website in the comments below. Um, and any mistakes uh, in this video are my own. So the first line of this prayer says, may all beings be happy. May all beings be happy. So this first term is sarve. And you can say that after me, sarve, sarve. Now, some of you might know that term from your yoga pose, shoulder balance is sarvangasana. So sarva, that root means all. And then we have bhavantu. Bhavantu. Sukhina. Sukhina. So sukha, another term you might be familiar with. Sometimes a sukhasana is a way to name a simple cross-legged seated pose. Sukha means uh, comfort, happiness, ease, even delight. So this line, sarve vavantu sukhina, means may all beings be happy. So let's just do that line in call and response, and I'll break it up into two parts. Sarve vavantu sukhina Let's do that much again, just like that. Sarve bhavantu sukhina. May all beings be happy. Line two says, may all beings be free from disease, or may all beings be healthy. So we have this term again, sarve, sarve, santu. So santu is health. May people have health. May they have vibrant well-being. And then, niramaya. Niramaya. May they not have illness. So may all beings have health, and may they not have illness. And so now again, we'll do call and response, and I'll divide the line in two. Sarve santu niramaya. Sarve Santu Niramaya. All right, line three. Sarve Badrani Pashyantu. So again, Sarve, Sarve, all, all beings. Badrani. Badrani Pashyantu Pashyantu So that means what we see. May we see that which is good, that which is gracious, that which is auspicious. This is the line that I find especially inspiring because it's very easy to look at the downside, the negativity, the suffering, but it's very uplifting to look at the good, to look at what, what is virtuous. 
And there are many people, whether they be healthcare workers, scientists, politicians, or, or maybe your neighbor, who are really stepping up to do very positive actions. And so we have to have that point of view. Let all beings see and experience that which is auspicious or that which is spiritually uplifting. All right, so we'll do this line now in the two parts. Save Badrani Pashantu. And again. Save Badrani Pashantu. Line four. Ma. Say that. Ma. Ma. Kashchin. Kashchin. Dukkha. Dukkha. Bhag Bhavet. Bhag Bhavet. So basically, this line is saying, let no one suffer. Let no one suffer. So Dukkha is suffering, despair, dis-ease, discomfort. So we see these two terms, sukha and dukkha, as a pair of opposites. And just as we want to avoid pain and we don't want suffering and discomforts in our lives, all beings are the same. All beings want to avoid difficulties, want to be free of suffering. And so with this line, we're sort of generating in our, in our hearts this very deep intention that that, that be true. And we know, I hope, from our yoga studies that an end to suffering is actually available to us. And we'll have to take the path of practice to get there. But we shouldn't think that the end of suffering isn't possible. That is a fundamental teaching of yoga, that the end of suffering is possible. And so we can wish that, we can intend that for ourselves and for others as well. So now I'll divide this line in two parts for the call and response so you can practice. Ma kashchid dukkha bhag bhavet Ma kashchid dukkha bhag bhavet And like many of these Sanskrit chants, it ends with the line Om, peace, peace, peace. So this word, shanti, is a long A sound, shanti, and not such a sharp E at the end. So it's not really shanti, it's more like shanti. And, and with this little uh, letter at the end, it indicates a kind of aspirated sound at the end. So. Really, the pronunciation of this word is something like uh, shanti, shanti, shanti. Try that. And again, listen and then repeat. Shanti, shanti, shanti. That's it. All right, so we've done it uh, with the parts. So now I'll go line by line. And you can try to repeat the whole line back. You can close your eyes and do it by listening. Or you can open your eyes and follow along on the chart. And I will also include this text and the English translation in the comments below. All right? So sit up nicely, everybody. Get a good lift up in your chest. If you wish, you can fold your palms. Have that uh, uh, state of mind that is uh, quiet that is sanctified, purified, dedicated to the practice of yoga, and dedicated to the welfare of all beings. Save Bhavantu Sukhina Save Santu Niramya Save Badrani Pashyantu 
ma kaschid dukkha bhag bhavet om shanti 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 now i will chant the whole chant and uh, you can see if you can chant it right along with me. Save Bhavantu Sukhina Save Santu Niramaya Save Bhadrani Pashyantu Makashchid Dukkha Bhag Bhavet Om Shanti 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 So I hope you'll consider uh, chanting this chant very regularly. It can really work like a mantra. A mantra is a verse or a phrase that operates, for one thing, it operates to stabilize the mind. That other thoughts, negative thoughts, distracted thoughts are sort of kept away. Mantra literally means that which protects the mind. So you can use this chant like a mantra to bring your own mind to a quiet state. But in addition to that, the prayer has content. And so when we apply our consciousness, our energy, our awareness, to the intent, to the content of the prayer, that is uh, having an effect on the universe. If we believe the fundamental idea that everything is connected, then our thoughts, our words, and of course our actions really do matter and ripple out into the universe. So um, thank you so much for listening, and uh, I hope perhaps you can consider making this chant uh, a daily practice. Namaste.